Alongside Nicole Branna, I'm Alex Loeb. And Nicole, here we go. Texas looking to advance to the regional semis for the 17th straight year, while Georgia, opposite story. They're trying to make it to the regional semis for the first time since 1993. What do you expect to see tonight? A lot of fun, a lot of dancing out there, but both of these teams came out very strong last night. Great serving, great blocking, both very offensive teams. So I think we're going to see a lot of heat coming in this gym tonight. Let's begin with Georgia. They were led by the star senior Casey Evans, who set a Bulldog single match postseason record with 26 kills. Talking about the heat, Casey Evans was bringing those thunderous kills left and right. You name it, she's got it. I expect to see more of that tonight, and they're going to need that from her if they want to take down the number one seed in this tournament. Talented, well-rounded player for the Georgia Bulldogs. Evans with 26 kills, the rest of the team with 27 in unreal performance by the senior. As for Texas, they're coming off a performance against Fairleigh Dickinson, where serving and blocking led the way from the service line. They had a season-high 13 aces. And let's take note, it was a low-scoring game, a little lopsided from FDU, but they came out, gave a fight, but Texas dominated seven blocks, many, many aces. I don't know if we'll see as many tonight, but I say go for it. Georgia is going to also bring it, but Texas is coming out strong, and if they want to win that championship, that blocking is going to be a major key. I think the second half of the season, they have really upped their blocking game. So I expect to see a lot more tonight. Georgia's bringing some big hitters, and they're going to need to get two blockers on them to slow them down. The Longhorns had an utterly dominant performance against Fairleigh Dickinson, led by Kayle Akana. She tied a career high with seven aces. That is a new Texas single match postseason record. The seven aces from the transfer, Kayle Akana, in charge of the Longhorns, now nine time Big 12 Coach of the Year, Jared Elliott. 65 and 21 in the postseason and 555 total wins in charge of the Longhorns. His counterpart leading the way for the Georgia Bulldogs, also a conference coach of the year. Tom Black, the SEC coach of the year, first Georgia head coach to win that award since 1985. It's a Georgia team that has greatly exceeded expectations. They were picked to come in ninth in the conference in the preseason poll. They finished in third in SEC record for Georgia with 13 conference wins, hoping to keep their magical run going. They've had a great year, and as I said, they came out strong last night. And with all the little nerves and rattles that were going on, they really handled it well. So tonight, a little bit different situation, especially with this gym pack for them. So let's see how they handle it. It is the 10th consecutive sellout here at Gregory Gym. That is a new program record as the second round here in Austin is underway. Here we go, Amber Stivrin serving to begin the match. Molly Phillips off the block. Casey Evans. Zoe Fleck to Phillips. Bradley Cox on the receiving end of that. Hammering one inside the block is Megan Froming, and Georgia scores the first point of the match. The Bulldogs overall on the season 23 and 7, coming off their first NCAA tournament win in 27 years. While the Longhorns are the number one overall seed in the tournament for just the second time in program history. Evans, the senior, Fleck reaches for that one. And Georgia goes up early 2 0. Georgia coming out with the power from the get go, and that's what I love to see. Come out strong, set up those angles, set up those hard hits. So it opens up different shots. Stibrin serving again. 23 aces on the season. One last night against Towson. That one hammered by Caffey off of Cox. And Texas registers point number one for the Longhorns. And that's something Texas always wants to do is establish those middles from the get-go. And that starts with a good pass. And as we know, if you've been watching Texas this year, Zoe Fleck is nailing those. Madison Skinner serving. What a performance last night for the transfer from Kentucky. Tied a season high with three aces and hit 533. That one is in. 
Some of the Texas players thinking that was the wrong call, but it is 3-1 Georgia. Perfect deep shot tagging that baseline. Mackenzie Norris serving into the net, and it's 3-2. Dope things up. This is the seventh all-time meeting between these two teams, but the first time since 2008, Texas has never lost to Georgia. 6-0 all-time. Zoe Fleck, Big 12 libero of the year. In the middle off the O'Neill block, Fleck unable to get to it, and Georgia on the attack early. Both of these teams came out on fire last night. Georgia opened up, taking the first set 25-10 over Towson, while the Long Longhorns grabbed their opener 25-6 over Fairley Dickinson in the nightcap. Alexa Fortin, three aces last night. Molly Phillips hammers one home. That was an angle if I've ever seen one, and Phillips doing what she's been doing all year. Consistent player, beautiful step close, and she just nails that one right by the blocker. Tagging that sideline, that is an angle. Well, here is Kayle Akana, who was devastating from the service line last night with seven aces again, a Texas postseason single match record. That was tapped over by Sophie Fisher. Logan Eggleston, the block was there by Georgia. Top 15 in the nation in blocks, but that one went out of bounds, and we are tied at four. Well, the Bulldogs know that Eggleston is a firecracker firepower for this Texas offense, so they're going to try to get two on her as much as they can. Texas scored on 21 of Akana's 23 serves last night. Sophie Fisher inside the block, the transfer from Kentucky. She has been a huge part of their turnaround. Remember last year, Georgia, they had a losing record, went 12 and 17 overall. They bring in Sophie Fisher, turned her into an all SEC middle blocker after she was an outside hitter with Kentucky. That one too strong. Well, you want to kind of out and serve tough, but you got to have a good balance of when to know to go for it, put it in the right spot. Last night, Georgia threw in some short serves, so I expect they will probably try to do that again tonight to slow down this Texas offense. Here's the four-time All-American Logan Eggleston. Most aces in Texas history. Adding to her total, 198, now seven shy of tying the Big 12 record. I'm going to keep track of you because every time you talk about aces, the players get one. So you're one for one now, Alex. Texas has opened up the tournament on fire from the service line between last night and tonight. <laughs> Sophie Fisher, her former teammate Skinner, was in front of that one, meeting at the top of the net. Skinner at it. And that one is in. Texas up by two. Well, Sophie Fisher is another player to watch on Georgia. And Skinner knows, played against her, practiced against her. So I have a feeling she's got a little insight of how to beat that block. Fisher won a natty with Maddie in 2020. Now opponents tonight. Up in sky high. Diving for that one is Zoe Fleck. Fisher in the middle, right into the Texas block. Longhorns on a 6-1 run. Zoe Fleck doing what she does best, keeping that ball alive. And Asia O'Neill, Kong blocks straight down, and they know they need to shut down Fisher if they want to beat Georgia as well. Jared Elliott was urging the crowd on moments ago, but Fisher answers with the point. Sophie Fisher, 12 kills and eight blocks last night against Towson. Both teams hitting over 400 tonight early on. Bailey Cox serving 21 aces on the year for the sophomore. KT Skinner taps it over. Cox. Mercado was there. Madison Skinner 
That one deflected off Fortin out of bounds. Well, Skinner is doing a nice job coming in angled, looking like she's gonna crank it and turning it down that line. She is beating the middle of that block, a little seam in it, and she is finding it. Asia O'Neill getting ready to serve. O'Neill hit 615 last night. She has been on fire over the second half of the season. And reaching for it defensively. That one off of Kathy. O'Neill saves it. Free ball for Georgia. Oh, having trouble handling it. Somehow sent it over and got the point. What a rally. I mean, this is big time, right? These games are you don't win, you go home, and both of these teams know there's a lot on the line. Look at this play by both sides. Unbelievable, and we're only in the first set. I think we're gonna see a lot more of this. Just a wild point. Here's Clara Brower, the Texas native. Skinner hammers one! Madison Skinner at 533 last night, pick it up where she left off tonight. She has this season. I felt like she started a little bit slow coming in here, but they worked on that set and connection, and man, she has been like lights out since then. There's Sage Ka'aha Ina Torres, the Big 12 setter of the year. Eggleston. Molly Phillips. Cox setting it up for Stivrins. And Georgia answers with the point. Back to a two-point opening set. We talked about the hot start by both of these teams in their opening round matchups last night. So far, Texas hitting 429, Georgia 389. They're powerful teams, and I expected them to bring the heat from the get-go. Diving for that one was Eggleston. Evans hammers one. Off the touch. One thing with Evans last night, I noticed a little bit, I don't know if she was anxious or what, but she comes in a little bit early sometimes, but she's so athletic and talented, she can make that adjustment. But against a Texas strong number one team, you gotta wait a little bit, come in strong, get that set. Bulldogs within one. Skinner drops it in, diving attempt made by Froning to keep it alive. Kathy in the middle, Cox is there. Evans right into the block. Kathy at the ready. This is exactly what Texas has improved on. The second part of the season, the blocking has been elevated. Closing that block together, pressing over, that is the key to get those hands over the net. Kathy started the final nine matches of the regular season, had a huge impact, 37 blocks for the former All-American. And there is Eggleston in front. Whichever way you go, Kathy is doing a nice job reading in the middle, closing that block to the pins. You can see Eggleston pinched in a little bit on that replay, waiting for that back set. Jared Elliott told us before the first match of the season, blocking is going to be the key for our team this year. Tapped over. And Texas gets the point. And a timeout called by the Bulldogs here from a sold-out Gregory Jim. One of these teams will advance to the regional semifinals. Stay with us. Texas with their largest lead so far in the opening set, up by four after that last point. Clara Brower is a back row setter, and she cannot break the top of the plane of the net, so that ball was a little bit tight, and it ended up going over, and referee felt like she was over that mark. 13-9, Longhorns, Madison Skinner serving off the top of the net. Cox Stoke to save it. Evans with that thunder and the point. Well, you can see the intensity on Evans' face after that kill coming in, getting her team pumped up. She is known as the firecracker on this Georgia squad. She had 50 attacks last night against Towson. That was her third 50-attack match of the month. Too strong. Here is Zoe Fleck. She is actually the reigning three-time conference libero of the year. It just depends on what conference you're talking about. Won the Big 12 libero of the year this year, but the last two seasons before this one, 
the reigning two-time Pac-12 Libero of the Year. Eggleston finishes that one off. That is a thing of beauty. Eggleston coming in, elevating, inside set, trying to throw that block off, and man, she just powers that one right through the seam. Not able to close it, and they're gonna have to zone in on her if they want a chance to win. Evans waits for it off the block. And the halter there in the back row. Eggleston at it again. Perfect placement. Eggleston is so good at using up every single area of the court. This one, that deep pocket going for those end lines. She puts that ball wherever she wants. Another timeout called by Georgia. Texas with their second 6-1 run of the opening set. The Longhorns are hitting 444. Three blocks already, Nicole. Well, they have improved that this second part of the season. I think it's probably been something they've worked on making adjustments. Depending on what team you're playing tonight, Georgia, you have Casey Evans and Sophie Fisher, a middle and an outside. So that eye work is going to be key of where that setter is getting the ball and trying to slow those two big hitters down. Now, Georgia actually is the team that comes in top 15 in the nation in blocks per set, but so far it has been all Texas in that category. Well, Texas is such an offensive team, the best in the country with their hitting percentage, and they're going to need some major blocks to slow it down to stay in this game. We saw it last night from Georgia. Maybe they're a little nervous right now coming in. A lot of different elements. This is a whole different environment than they played in last night. There were some fans here, but nothing like it is right now. Well, it's electric here at Gregory Gym. And so far, you talk about Texas's efficiency. Zero attack errors for the Longhorns up to this point. I mean, that's like a coach's dream right there. You got to keep those errors down. You don't want to be giving away free points. And sometimes with a set, that's the thing for the hitters and your experience and showing your veteran age is making a good decision. If you don't get that perfect set, giving yourself another chance. And I think that's one thing that Texas is very good at. It's a Texas team that had six players selected to the all Big 12 squad this year. A program record. Jared Elliott named coach of the year. Logan Eggleston, Big 12 player of the year. As we said, they also have the setter of the year and libero of the year as well in the Big 12. So here we go, ready to resume play as Jared Elliott looks on. Flex serving. Nearly an ace as two Bulldogs collided. SKT, Molly Phillips, Point Texas. Well, that is Molly Phillips' bread and butter, that hard angle hit, and she just does it time and time again. Georgia not getting there and closing that block, but Texas has three strong attackers up right now, so they've got to figure out which way to lean a little. In the middle, Fisher, well out of bounds. I think Georgia a little nerves right now, you know, coming in. This isn't quite what we saw yesterday, but you know, they're coming into the number one team in the country, packed house. Just got to settle down a little bit, take a deep breath. Five attack errors in the first set for the Bulldogs. Texas on an 8-1 run, the block was there, O'Neal. Tapped over, flat flying in. Eggleston into the block, keeps it alive. Phillips. In the middle, Fisher answers for the Bulldogs. And Fisher is running that middle a little slower than a quick that you might normally see. But like a little one and a half step close and she can put that ball away. Spent her first two years at Kentucky playing in 18 matches, won a national championship there as we said in 2020. Fortin serving for Georgia. SKT behind her. Beautiful set. And Phillips finishes the point. Well, that is impressive because that pass was towards Eggleston. You might think that SKT would just pop the ball up to her, but no, she reverses that across to the other pin. And that is what has made her such an elite setter in this country. Fifth in the nation, SKT is an assist per set. Here is Akana. In Kayla Akana's last four NCAA tournament matches, she has 16 aces. Texas with the point. Evans delivered too much behind that one. And when you're blocking well, this is what will happen. Hitters are going to go up and try to avoid the block, but you really have to keep attacking it. High hands, swipe it off, whatever you can do to try to score. Six attack errors now for Georgia. 
Fisher in the middle, tooling the block. She was top 10 in the SEC this year in hitting percentage at 340. A calming presence for the Bulldogs. Casey Evans serving. 131 career aces, but that one into the net. You know, all the misses that Georgia's had right now are going in the bottom of the net. So getting that ball, not good hands on it. Rather see it go long and miss long instead of in the bottom of the net. Got to clean those ones up. Eggleston, one ace already tonight. Hammered home by Skinner. That is what you don't want to do, is give them a free ball over the net because that one is coming right back for a kill. All started off with a beautiful serve. Madison Skinner says, thank you very much. We'll put that one away. Skinner hitting 500 in the opening set with a team I four kills. The block is there. That one knocked down Evans. And just too far, Point Georgia. No, they changed it off the touch. Georgia and Tom Black considering the challenge. Looks like they think it got the very tip. Sophie Fisher's waving, no, I didn't touch it, but looks like they did. So right now, no challenge, 23-12. Hammered by Fisher off the Kana. Well, that's one way to respond when the call doesn't go the way you think it should be. Nice pass and Fisher coming in. Wow, she can really put that ball either side. The tallest player Georgia's had in at least a decade, Sophie Fisher at 6'5". Here's Bailey Cox, the sophomore. SKT sliding over is Asia O'Neill, the nation's top hitter. I think she is the nation's top slide hitter on top of that. Wow, she is so good off of one foot, getting up, angled line, you name it, she's got it. Here comes the fan favorite, Melanie Parra, off the bench. Played two sets last night. Seven aces on the season. Set point for Texas here in the opening frame. Stivrins drops it in. Point Georgia. Well, that was a nice reach by Stivrins because that set looked like it was going tight and almost into that antenna, but she stopped it and did the best she could and ends up for a point. Sophie Fisher is leading the Bulldogs with six kills for Texas. Madison Skinner with four. There's Clara Brower, grew up just a few hours from here in the Woodlands. Skinner taking something off of it, diving in was Brower. Stivrins. In the middle, Kayla Caffey. Texas takes the opening set, 25-14. The Longhorns end the first set on a 15-5 run. Texas hits 519 in the opening frame. Zero attack errors capped off emphatically by Caffey. Here in Austin, after that opening set, Nicole, what can Georgia do to turn things around and try and gain some momentum after Texas really took charge? Well, here's the thing. Texas's offense is the best in the country. It's fast. It's powerful. They're going to score. You can't get frustrated with amazing plays. You just say, hats off, good for you. But Georgia needs to slow it down, get some touches. They don't have any blocks right now. Last night, they came out and were a blocking powerhouse. So. They've got to get touches on that ball and good touches and score in transition. Casey Evans sent that one off the block again. Georgia coming off a season in which they posted their most overall wins in nine years. Most SEC wins in program history. And trying to head to the regional semis for the first time in nearly 30 years. Diving in to keep it alive was Mallory Downing. Hammered off of Fleck high towards the rafters. Phillips, tremendous dig by Evans, but it went out of bounds. 
That play right there is what Georgia needs to change. That was an overpass coming over off of Eggleston's serve reception. They need to be aggressive and put that ball away. Madison Skinner serving. Four kills in the first set. She hit 444. Evans waits for it. Off the touch. So much power for the senior out of Ohio. She really does have so much heat behind that ball. That one coming in a little bit early, but did a little pause, waited for it, kept that ball in front of her, and that's how you can get on top of it better. Five kills tonight for Evans. After a Georgia postseason record, 26 last night. That was something, I'll tell you. Again, on 50 attacks. SKT behind her to Phillips. Diving was Cox to keep it going. Free ball for Texas. Caffey! That is a very quick whip of an arm, I'll tell you. She gets up in the air, cocks that back, and bam! Very quick, good connection, and thumb down away from her. Hard to tell where that one's going. You can see Fisher's going the other way. Fleck nearly, yes, it hit the floor. Ace number 112 of her career. Trying to keep that acing spree alive from last night. 15 aces in the tournament now for Texas. Fisher in the middle off the block. Eggleston. Point, Texas. Logan Eggleston playing in her 137th career match. Reigning three-time Big 12 Player of the Year. I didn't go for that. Evans bringing it for Georgia. Well, that's kind of the one-two punch there for Georgia. With Fisher coming in for the quick three, and it just flies over her head to Evans. I really like that play. They had success with it last night, and I would expect to see it a little bit more here now as it's working so far. A career for Casey Evans was the SEC Freshman of the Year in 2019. On the off the block, batted up by Cox, stumbling down. Stibbons. Eggleston keeps it going. Senior tries it again, taking something off of it. SKT trying to kick it, and Georgia ties it up at four. Eggleston trying to mix it up with a little soft block, but Georgia had some good hang time on that block. Bulldogs trying to bounce back. It's set number two. Evans had one ace last night. O'Neal hammers one off Cox, batted around. Point, Texas. Good move by Cox on this dig. I thought it was going to go up, but just a little too low. O'Neal. Over the top of these two blockers, and let's remind you, that's a 6-5 block there with Sophie Fisher, so that's not easy to do. Here's Akana. A little bit too far. First service error of the night for Texas. Longhorns with only one service error and one attack error up to this point. Bailey Cox, 21 aces on the year. Georgia yet to register an ace tonight. Texas with two SKT, scooped it over the knee. She just goes with the flow of that ball. It was going over a little tight, and she just keeps going with that momentum. And she has a lot of success when she goes up aggressive for those points. Crowd quiets down for Eggleston. Ace number two for the senior. Well, Texas is bringing the pressure. This is some very impressive serving to continue from last night tonight. They are definitely playing some very top level volleyball. 199 career aces now for Logan, Logan Eggleston. They're just six shy of tying the Big 12 record. That one is out. Four, Texas. We were tied moments ago at four. Texas now up by three.
Texas siding out at 80 percent. Crowd electric so far tonight. That one backed up Evans. Stivrens. Madison Skinner. And Georgia. No, it was off the touch. Texas with the point. Well, this is all starting with some excellent serving from Eggleston. Good hand on the ball. Look out. 4 nothing Texas run. Georgia calls timeout. Texas took the first set, 25-14, up by four here in the second. One of the stars, the many stars for the Longhorns this year, has been the Big 12 setter of the year, Sage Kaaha and Torres. She's also been on fire from the service line as of late, 11 aces in her last 12 matches. Sometimes gets overlooked, but she's just been phenomenal all year. Well, she has quarterbacked this team to the nation's top hitting percentage of this offense, really spreading it around. Flying in is Logan Eggleston for the kill. Talked she, about SKT, the former All-American with Utah. Well, she is a talented setter, setting anywhere on the court. If the ball's going one direction, she gets it the other way, opening up her hitters to have a lot of times a solo block, and that's exactly what you want to be doing as a setter. Stivrin sending it over. Madison Skinner into the block, kept alive, the pancake from Akana. Hammered into the block, O'Neal was there, she's fired up, Point Texas. Keeping that ball alive, whatever it takes, look at that lift, and finishing it off with what she does so well, pressing over and getting that ball down. Great effort by Akana defensively. Texas on a 6-0 run. Eggleston with ace number 200 of her career. Timeout again called by Georgia. Unbelievable play by Texas, and you know what? Tournament time, this is what you need. You come out like this every single game, no matter who it is, and these aces, wow, I'm impressed. This Georgia team finished third in the SEC. That is a very tough conference, so they are battling night in, night out after tough competition. I honestly thought there wouldn't be this many aces so far, but Texas is doing a good job getting a hand on that ball and finding the open spots. So what's changed? Texas had 142 aces during the season. Not a huge number. 13 last night. They already have four so far tonight through a set and a half. Well, they've been working on it. I've seen a few things as I've come to watch practice. They've got different contraptions on the net and trying to serve over at different areas. So I think it's something they've really been focused on and working on. And as I said, scoring an ace, I mean, it's less work for the whole team, right? You're getting a good hand on the ball, good serve. You're keeping that pressure on the other team. Kind of like, yikes, what are we going to do? Now, if you're Tom Black in Georgia, you just called that timeout. What is the advice there to try to get back in it? You need to focus on your side right now. They are not passing the ball. So get our feet to the ball. Be aggressive. Call it early. That ball is near you. Get it. Don't think your par partner next to you is going to get it. Be aggressive. Take the ball, get it up. Doesn't have to be a perfect pass. Georgia has a lot of powerful hitters here that can hit with an offset that's not perfect on the net, so you gotta rely on that as well. Bulldogs finishing third in the SEC this season. As for ranked teams Georgia played this year, they swept Florida, but were swept by Kentucky and Georgia Tech as well. And that Kentucky sweep, although it was a sweep, the scores didn't tell the whole story. It was a very fought off battle. Good game by Georgia. And that's one of the keys for them today. They want to come out here, win or lose, leave it all on the court, play good volleyball. Tapped over. Hammered by O'Neill. The block was there. Stibbons. Madison Skinner. Diving defensive play made by Evans. That one too far. 
Well, Georgia's getting the chances. That was a beautiful dig by Evans. Perfect, actually. They just need to put it away. They've got to start scoring in transition. You can't let Texas go on these big runs. Yeah, 8-0 run for the Longhorns. Georgia with nine attack errors. And he sends it over. Skinner on the attack. Georgia Block stepping up. Stivrins, an awkward play that results in a Texas point. SKT wanting to get into that blocking line there. Nice alert play. Ready for the overpass. And that's it. You don't want to force it. You got to get that ball off the net for Georgia right now. Give a little space. Texas has now scored 13 points off of 15 Eggleston serves. So the run comes to an end. Texas went on a 9-0 run. We'll see how Georgia responds here. They've got to get back there and rip some serves, honestly. They're down by quite a few. You've got to serve tough. And Clara Brower. Tom Black called her the most overlooked player on the team. An important factor a number of times there. She was diving in for the dig. Stiffrens, that is out. Double-digit attack errors for Georgia. Those errors are making a huge difference right now. And again, if you're going to go up and try to avoid the block, it's not going to end well. You have to still attack it. Asia O'Neill. 83 aces for her storied career. And there's number 84. This is another night of aces for Texas, the way this is going right now. Sometimes the net works in your favor. Such is the case tonight, O'Neill, with Texas up by 10. Great effort to keep that alive by Brower. Skinner, the Georgia block, answers the call. And Georgia was top 15 in the nation in blocks per set this year, nearly 3%. That was a nice close, good passion after that one, getting the team fired up. Stiverin's getting ready to serve the former transfer from Louisville, younger sister of three-time All-American Lauren Stiverins, who is in the house. Former start, Nebraska. <laughs> Kathy in the middle. Stivens there on the back end. Evans hammers one into the block. Again, the senior denied, but that's out of bounds. Point, oh, Georgia. Georgia. Well, there's that play again from Georgia. The quick in the front, middle, and Evans on the outside. Ball flies over the middle, and they're having success with it when they do it. There is Lauren Stibbrens, the three-time All-American, was here to watch Georgia last night. And back again this evening at a sold-out Gregory Gym. Look at the power behind Caffey, but oh, not Georgia. accurate. Georgia trying to go on a run here in set number two. Texas showing all the different weapons they have. Eggleston coming from the back row. You really have to be alert as a blocker to figure out where to go. Stiverin serving again. Skinner. Evans, the senior, caught a kana up high. Eggleston couldn't save it. Well, this is just what Georgia needed after dropping the first set, falling behind by 10 in the second set. Texas calls a timeout after a 4-0 Georgia run. Well, Evans comes in, rips that one down the line. They gave her a little seam there, and she found it. And that's one thing Texas does not want her to get on fire because she, as we saw last night, she can really come out here and change things. Georgia huddling up. You can see Sophie Fisher smiling there, and they said that is the one thing about her the team loves. No matter the, the situation, no matter the pressure, she is always smiling out there, always happy. It's not a put on. That's who she is. And that has inspired this team. Fisher coming over from Kentucky, winning a natty there. Just been a major addition. Well, that was what Coach Tom Black said. He got the call one week. 
that Sophie Fisher was going to come. And then a couple days later, Evan said, I'm going to stay. So, I mean, that's a good present right there. I mean, having that combo back again next year, oof, look out. Sophie Fisher, former teammate of Madison Skinner at Kentucky, won in 2020. Fisher played in 18 matches in two years with Kentucky. She played outside hitter there, an outside hitter her whole life. But when she came to Georgia, Tom Black said, I don't know if you're going to like it, but I think you're going to flourish at middle blocker. She said switching positions was, quote, like being hit by a train. Took her a while to adjust. But this year, she has developed into a player they call the Great Wall of Fisher. Third most blocks in a single season in Georgia history. Third in the nation in total blocks. An all SEC performer again at middle blocker for Georgia. A wonderful addition to this team. And just from watching her, I would love to be her teammate too. She's got good energy, calm, stabilizes the team, keeps everyone balanced. And the Bulldogs on a 4-0 run. Madison Skinner on the attack, and Texas puts an end to that Bulldogs run. Sometimes you just need a little bit of a timeout to calm things down, take a deep breath, and go back to the basics. Aha, uh -huh. Anator is serving. She has 11 aces in her last 12 matches. Texas with five aces tonight. Oh, nearly another one. Evans tooling the blocker. There we go. That's how you use the block. You're going to get two blockers up. She's going to get that respect from every team because she's such a big part of this offense and finding ways to score like that. Wiping it off, going up strong. Sage Powell didn't play at all last night, but serving here and serving up an ace. That was a nice serve going deep. Just caught Eggleston high. Perfect serve. Good timing. Now the grad student out of California. That one skimmed the net. In the middle, Kathy. Off the Texas block. SKT. Skinner punches it over. Bouncing around and Texas gets the point. That was almost like Skinner came in over her shoulder, coming in one way and making that work. Hey, all right, I'm just going to go that way. Looked a little funny off of her hand, but hey, it works. Just how you draw it up. Madison Skinner, seven kills to lead the Longhorns tonight, hitting 333. A couple of blocks as well. Service there. Georgia within five. Emma Halter coming in for Texas. Wow, she is such a fun player to watch, too, on defense back there. Running around, passing very well. Only a freshman, but just seems like such a mature player out on the court every time I've seen her play. Alexa Fortin serving three aces last night against Towson. Phillips. Another attack error. That's number 12 for Georgia tonight. Part of that is the Texas block. They've done a nice job putting up a solid block. Well, we will have a challenge on that last point by Tom Black, his first of the night. Well, last night he had some good success with the challenges. I'm sure he hopes that carries over. And the challenge rule is if you put the challenge card out there and win the challenge, then you will keep it. But if the call reverses or stands not in your favor, you will lose it. Only the ruling two. was no touch there. Do you see anything conclusive? Does the ball change direction at all once it goes I don't past see Phillips? Any fingers moving from that angle, but I know they've got different angles to look at. Mm. Doesn't seem like even that pinky is moving at all. That will be tough to overturn from those two vantage points so far. It's another look. Again, the first challenge of the night issued by Tom Black in a crucial spot in this match. 
with Texas already taking the first set. And the Longhorns potentially up 19 13 here. And the call will stand. Well, he had to try, right? Yep. Either way, had a little break for the team, a little mini timeout as they reviewed the footage. Fisher in the front row for Georgia. Powerful hitter. Get a pass, get that ball to her. That is in another ace for Texas. This is unreal. Number six tonight. Number 19 of the first two rounds for the Longhorns. And we'll have another challenge, back-to-back -back challenges by Tom Black. Well, Evans followed that ball all the way down the line. You can see her looking at it right there, and that's exactly what you want. Not in a position to pass it, though, if she thought it was in. That is a tough call there. Looks I mean, it's in. Quick review. Call stands. So now Georgia with no challenges left, unless we go to the fifth set. Well, and again, I think Tom Black sensing you really can't afford to drop this set. You have to leave it all out well, here. Well, a little frustration, set. I can imagine, with all these aces. Again, six tonight for Texas after 13 aces last night. Eggleston. Downing. Evans reaching back for that one. Caught the net, caught Texas. That set totally off the net, but Evans did a nice job waiting, taking a step into it, keeping it in front of her so she could bring the power. And there's that net for a little help. Evans with 10 kills on 20 attacks. Molly Phillips, they call her the surgeon. Five kills tonight so far, hitting better than 400 again. Well, if you give her even a little ounce of space, she will find it. She is a very consistent player. Funny thing about Texas from the service line tonight, six aces, none of them by Akana so far. There she is on the defensive end. Into the net. Kicked. Point, Georgia. Bulldogs trying to hang in there here. Fisher getting the better one of that little joust back over the net. The 6-5 transfer, third in the nation in blocks. Here's Cox serving. It's KT behind her, sliding over his O'Neal. Georgia was ready. Stivrens. This time, Eggleston off the touch. She's coming in. We know she loves the crushing angle, but she can do just as much damage down the line. High hands off the block. Logan Eggleston now with six kills, second most on the team, hitting 308. Five aces shy of tying the all time Big 12 record. That one misses. Georgia desperately needing to go on a run to get back in this second set. Serving will be Clara Brower, 25 aces on the year as Tom Black looks on. Charging it is Logan Eggleston with authority. Well, that was like a lightning bolt coming in and started with a perfect pass. Wow, what a heater of a hit coming in. And that's a back row attack, Alex. I mean, that seemed like you could hit that from the front row, but she is flying high. Texas all smiles right now. Another ace, O'Neal's second, Texas's seventh. Well, that was a riser. That one almost looked like it was going out, but Georgia just couldn't get out of the way of it. So you got to try to make the best, but Potter high. Set point for Texas. Stivrens. 
That is in. No, they changed it. One official signaled in, the other one out. Texas takes the second set, 25-16. What an impressive start to that first set and second set. Texas is wanting that championship, and that is evident by their play. We'll be back in Austin, number one seeded Texas, up two sets to nothing. Here at Gregory Gym, the story for the second straight night for Texas has been aces. 13 last night, seven so far tonight for two sets. I'm very impressed with the serving game. Again, I think Texas has been working on this. They're getting such a good hand on that ball, going long, different spots, different heats. I didn't expect this many, honestly, against Georgia. They're, they were third in the SEC, so they're playing tough competition every night. So I felt seeing some tough serving all year, but Texas has really come out and taken over. Those are staggering numbers right there on your screen. Texas, as we said, a decent number of aces, but about 1.7% during the season. Nothing outrageous. That number at the bottom is outrageous. 4% so far through a match and a half, pretty much. Of the NCAA tournament. Six aces in the second set alone tonight. Again, none of the seven aces in total by Akana, who had seven of her own in the opener. Well, they want that championship. It's been on their minds for a long time, and this is exactly how you play when you want that. As for Georgia, their season is on the line right now. It's Texas trying to add another banner. And looking good through the first two sets. If you're the Bulldogs, what was said in the huddle before this one? What could you possibly say knowing you cannot afford to drop another? Well, they need to be aggressive on the serve receive. There are way too many aces, in my opinion, going down right now. I mean, I know Texas is a good serving team, but be aggressive. Call that ball. It's, it's win or go home. You can't let those drop. No regrets out there. you got to play the best you can. And I think they can play better. Phillips charging in, downing somehow got a piece of that one. Zoe Fleck diving, Caffey finishing. I mean, Texas is playing some pretty clean volleyball. No matter who they set right now, they are getting that ball away. Kayla Caffey just turned 25 last week, by the way. She's seven years older than Emma Halter and the freshman on this squad. Evans, a dart off Zoe Fleck. And that is what Georgia needs right now from Evans to get things going for them. She did that last night, and I know she can do it again. She has played against big blocks all season and had success. She had 26 kills last night, the rest of the team 27. Tonight she has 11, the rest of the Georgia team 11 combined. SKT, Caffey. A bit too far. Georgia tying it up early. On the night, Texas hitting 371, the Bulldogs 136. And as we said, the attack errors have been a big difference. Georgia with 13 compared to Texas's five. Well, Georgia has their dynamic pair up right now with Fisher and Evans. Good combination for them with offense, but they've got to handle Zoe Flex serve right now, which she has really done a nice job tonight. We have an official attendance that has just been announced of 4,812. 10th consecutive sellout here at Gregory Gym, a program record. Evans with a point, kill number 12, and we're tied again. Evans is that player, she gets a kill. She's probably telling the center, give me the, the next one, I want that ball. And you can just tell out there with her passion celebration leading this team. Trying to put this team on her back right now and save their season. There's the junior Fortin. Phillips reaches over using all of that 6-5 frame. When you have passes like that, every time you can run whatever set you want. And that is a three pass, as we call it, if you were charting it. That means you can set three different options. Molly Phillips came in with the 21st best hitting percentage in the nation. At 395, she's hitting 462 tonight. Oh, pancake by Downing. 
O'Neal. Evans. Sliding over is Asia O'Neal. How about Bailey Cox saving it for Georgia? Eggleston at the net. Well, Texas is scoring in transition when they get the chance almost every single time. Georgia's having a little misconnect right now with their setters and hitters. You cannot be doing that against this kind of team. Six blocks for Texas, just two for Georgia. Who came in as one of the best blocking teams in the nation. Back to Evans they go, and she answers the call. Well, you can see she comes down on that one with a fist down, yelling to her team, let's go! She can take over this match. She's got a great serve. We saw that last night as well against Towson. 131 career aces. Eggleston took something off of it and gets the point. That's the experience from Eggleston there coming in, seeing the open spot. Hitters are back because she's been cranking that ball, so they're waiting for the heat. And you just plop it right behind that block to the open spot. Three aces tonight for Eggleston. There is number four, 201 of her career. What a performance for the four-time All-American. That ball is just flying across that net so high. <laughs> she has to laugh a bit and smile. Everything going her way here in front of the home crowd. Four aces away from tying the Big 12 record. Flat is there. Pushed over by Eggleston. Fisher met at the net somewhat by Skinner. There's Zoe Fleck flying all over the place. Stivrens. Skinner. Quite the rally going here in the third set. Scooped over by SKT. Oh my goodness. Fortin was ready. O'Neill finishes off the point. She is flying around, getting out of the way of those players, and Asia O'Neill with the thunder straight down. This place is on fire. Zoe Fleck is well aware that those type of plays energizes this arena. She loves it, as you I can think, see. I think that's a standing ovation for her right there, for this team. I mean, let's talk about this team. They are playing pretty flawlessly, but when you are practicing day in and day out against this type of team with the depth they have, it's unbelievable. Sophie Fisher, Texas with the point. Yeah, we were at their practice the other day. At times, their practices look more competitive than their actual matches. Timeout called by Georgia. Texas up by five here in the third is the key word here in Austin, Nicole. A buzz going around the building right now. Logan Eggleston, four aces already. There's number five to tie her career high. I mean, Alex, seriously, this is unreal. It is like an acing machine here from the Longhorns tonight. She has only lost four times in her career in this building, 70 and four at the Greg. Fisher. Skinner got all that one. Georgia has not been able to answer the serves or stopping their attack at all today. Georgia calling another timeout. Texas with an 8 1 run, their largest lead of the set. You know, Tom Black trying to figure out an answer here. Well, Texas is playing pretty flawlessly, I must say, in every single category. And hats off to them. You know what? It doesn't, Georgia needs to just go out there, play the best volleyball they can, focus on their side of the net, because uh, anytime Texas, if they're scoring from the service line, the attack, 
everything. Well, listen, on paper, they're a superpower, a super team at times. They have talked about it. The only team that can beat them is themselves. Their one loss on the road in Ames to Iowa State, they dominated two of those five sets, but as Jared Elliott put it, they went on cruise control, got a little too complacent when they're playing up to their potential, as we've seen the last two nights. Well, they I look think, unstoppable. I think they fixed that because last night, too, they played at a very high level, and at times when you're playing a lower seed, there is that chance that you might take a little lull, but there was not one point that I thought, oh, okay, they fell asleep a little here. No, they are here ready to go they have been working for this the entire season and they all want that championship since losing to Iowa State on October 19th Texas has lost two sets that's it winning nine in a row ten if you include the forfeit by TCU Jared Elliott told us the other day hey listen it wasn't the worst thing in the world to lose during the regular season and know how to come back from adversity well, that too, and also that break from TCU. Having that game off a few days off, he said the players, a couple of them, they went home. That Mentally, in the middle of the season, when you are grinding it out day in and day out, that is a nice little thing that a lot of, no other team has that, that I know of, to kind of rejuvenate, come out, and now push ahead to the end of the season. We resume action, a service error by Eggleston. Tom Black getting that after the timeout, trying to make the server think about it a little. Worked in his favor. Texas hasn't lost even a set here at Gregory Gym in 78 days. Service error. Asia O'Neill already with two aces tonight. Again, Texas with nine aces in the match after 13 last night. Keeps trading the service errors. What a season by the Georgia Bulldogs. A year ago went 12 and 17, 7 and 9 in the SEC. Pick to come in ninth this year in the preseason poll. Tom Black said, listen, I was just hoping to have a winning season, that's all. They have gone above and beyond that expectation. Texas with another point. Texas is on fire. SKT does that well. She goes with it, putting it down. One-handed, two hands, you name it, she's got it. In the middle, that one off the hands of Sage Powell. And Texas with the point getting closer and closer to putting it away. And those are some of the errors we've been seeing lately with Georgia. The connections with the hitters, they're just not going smoothly. Stivrens answers with the point. Beautiful hit down the line. Coming in hard every single time. Stiverns saw her back to see earlier today. And she can just thump the ball herself as well. For the Bulldogs, already a tremendous season. Fresh off their first NCAA tournament win in 27 years last night. No matter how this one ends, a lot to be proud of for Tom Black and his squad. Absolutely. And he said they had ups and downs. The players stuck there and hung with him. And that says a lot about him as a coach, the coaching staff, the university. They wanted to stay. So they've done a nice job this season. I expect them just to keep going up and improving. SEC Coach of the Year. I mean, so many impressive numbers for Georgia. Third place in the SEC for the first time since 95. And a program record 13 wins in the SEC. Took down eight seeded Towson last night. But running out of time here in Austin. Oh, everything going Texas's way. They look happy. The 25 year old. Literally going their way. That ball looks like it's flying out, but no, it sinks right at the end line. Evans is given everything she has to keep it alive, but they are just finding a way to stop her. Kathy's age has almost matched her jersey number. <laughs> what an addition. Just an embarrassment of riches for Texas. This yeah, roster, Texas the deepest the Jared Georgia. Elliott has ever Maybe seen not. on the 40 acres.
Bailey Cox getting ready to serve on the night. Texas hitting 378. Georgia 086. The Longhorns with nine aces. Georgia with one. Make it two. There we go. That's what Four. they need. Georgia. Get back. You know, give the green light right now. You don't want to make errors, obviously, from the line, but you've got to get the pressure. You've got to keep staying aggressive. You don't want to back off because Texas will gobble you up. Hammered by Caffey. That one is in. Kayla Caffey having a big third set. Well, she has really been a nice addition. Didn't play as much in the early season. Has come in. Now every time she is in there starting, she has just made a huge difference with that offense attack, getting that set down. Only played one set last night in the dominating win over Fairleigh Dickinson. Georgia answering with the point. Megan Froming. Georgia still has the energy, still pumping each other up. We saw last night they would be down by a few, come back and score some points and keep that pressure on. Alexa Fortin serving. Eggleston tooling the block. Nine kills for the senior. That one going right through the seam of the Georgia block. They didn't get that block closed, and Eggleston finds the spot to sneak it through. Okana. 16 aces in her last four NCAA tournament matches, going back to her time with Nebraska. Evans, Asia O'Neal, right there waiting for it. Texas can feel it. Well, they know they're going to Evans because she is their go-to player. So a little bit lead on that block, and that is how you can get it closed and sealed tight. Pressing over, beautiful. Texas now with 15 blocks in the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament. Okana. Asia O'Neal. Georgia ends up with the point. With an eight trying to hang around. Season on the ropes in Austin. Evans. Scooped over by SKT. Now she has done that enough times tonight that you've got to front the setter and put some pressure up. Get those hands up on the net so she can feel a little something. Sophie Fisher's hands are down, but SKT has proven that she can score. So get those hands up so she has them in her peripheral vision. Maybe not as confident to go up and do that. Good point. She's got four kills. Seven total attacks for the senior. Sophie Fisher in the middle. Point to Texas has never lost to Georgia. Looking to go 7-0 all-time and advance to the regional semis. That ball just flying a little long. A little too much power on it. You want to get a good hand on it, make it drop. Into the match comes the freshman for Texas, Devin Kahawai. Played one set last night. O'Neal serving. Stibbons. Akana, she's made a number of tremendous defensive plays tonight. Twentieth attack error of the night for Georgia. Well, Texas's block has created that because Georgia is avoiding their block instead of going after it, trying to hit those high hands but just missing or going around it, and they're going long. O'Neal. <laughs> Stevens with the point for Georgia. Well, Stiggins has a nice down-the-line attack, very powerful, having good success scoring on that one. SKT coming back in the mix. They put Devin Kahawai in there to have a bigger block and try to slow 
that outside attack down. Brower serving for Georgia. Skinner off the block. They go back to Stibbrons. SKT, Kayla Caffey. She is deadly in the middle. I mean, that arm is so, so quick. She is just getting that arm back, and it's coming out like a dart down the ground. I mean, the players aren't even getting under it. It is just going down very fast. Match point on the way. Looks like that isn't over. Ref didn't feel the ball, broke the plane of the net. Can't blame her. Sometimes I got a little anxious myself and you want to put those away, but you cannot go across the net and play the ball if it has a broken plane. Crowd was ready to jump out of this building, so it's 23-14 instead. And an ace delivered by Stivrens. Georgia not dead yet. Well, I love that serve. I just wish they would have done it a little bit sooner. They had success with it last night. Going for that short 10-foot line area. Slows offenses down, and that's what they've needed. A little change here. Now it's match point. Congratulations, Texas. You are headed back to the regional semifinals for the 17th straight year. Something. That is some the cleanest play I've ever seen. Everything going well for Texas tonight. Georgia did not know how to answer or stop them. And it all started last night, coming out in that first round, setting the tone for how they want to play and go forward in this tournament. And I got to say, look out, people. Texas is ready. Couldn't have hoped for a better start in the first two rounds of the tournament for the number one overall seed. We'll talk to the star of tonight's match. Logan Eggleston coming up.